intermarry, and we therefore we will intermingle, we'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here, and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white, regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. What power? What power? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... And as the church continues to grow, people are driving miles to hear the truth. Yes, I drove an hour to get here, but it's worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life and he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? So am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. You're traveling to another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. Jim's over here with you. Glad you are with us and hope you're ready for another study from God's Word, we want to say you are very much welcome to visit with us anytime you're in the area. We meet at 250 the Boulevard, and uh, we hope that uh, if you are interested in the Bible study, that you will come out and, and study the Bible with us. Uh, Thursday nights at 7 o'clock is when we have our midweek Bible study. We meet Sundays at 10 at 9 a.m. for Bible study and then 10 a.m. for worship. <clears throat> and uh, we really encourage you to come out, and uh, if you'd like to have a Bible study, uh, in your home, give me a call, 276-340-2653. That's how you can reach me. Or at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. A word from the Lord at gmail.com is how you can reach me. And so we hope that you will do that very thing. We're going to get right into the lesson tonight. Uh, the topic we're going to be discussing is this, uh, this gay marriage uh, amendment, ban, overthrow, whatever. The Supreme Court, I think on Monday, decided not to take up the cases of the uh, any of the states that had bans of gay marriage. They had, they had made constitutional amendments to ban gay marriage, and, and the Supreme Court decided not to take any of those up. And uh, I know on the buzz, they were talking about it Monday, and several uh, days after that, they were talking about it. Charles called me and wanted to get, get a reaction to it. And... Uh, what was going on and said there were some folks that are already getting their marriage license and and what we think about it and 
And as we were talking, and I, I would really like to have played you some of our, our uh, conversation on the buzz and then later on the, on the, the, I guess it was headliners or something like that later that night, but uh, I don't have that to play. But I'll give you some of the conversation that we had. And when uh, I was stating the, the position that the Bible would take on these matters, uh, I was asked, well, don't you think that's a little intolerant or don't you think you're discriminating? And so I want to take, I wanna take uh, those two things and uh, let's talk about where, you know, where the Bible speaks on these matters and why you might think that uh, I might be intolerant or why you might think that it would be discriminatory to have the position that we take uh, when, we, when we talk about the Bible, what the Bible teaches. But uh, in reality, I hope you'll realize that we're really not. We're actually more consistent than anybody else uh, that is uh, uh, t talking about this issue. And so, you know, really what we're talking about is, is this, this, this gay marriage, is it, is, it, is it true? Is it real? Is it something that we should be uh, uh, embracing? Or is it really just hype and hypocrisy? And I say it's hype and hypocrisy. That's exactly what it is. And so we're going we're gonna to show you that tonight. You know, friends, when we talk about the, the Bible, and we talk about uh, some things. I'm going to. I'm trying to decide which direction to go with this just right now. Uh, I guess we'll start with the discrimination part first of all, friends. You know, oftentimes when we make a stand on some things, we're saying, "Well, uh, you're discriminating. You're discriminating against some things." But let's notice this. Let's notice this, if you will. You know, when you hear the word discriminate. Oftentimes people say, well, that's bad. You know, it's, it's bad to discriminate. You should never discriminate. That means you're a bigot. You're a bigot if you discriminate. Well, is that, is that really the case? Is it wrong to discriminate? I suspect that every one of you that's watching uh, this program discriminate. And, and I will say that with, uh, with almost 100% certainty. I know I'll say it with 100% certainty. You discriminate. You discriminate every day. And yet, no one calls you a bigot. You know why? It's because there's certain discrimination, certain ways you can discriminate that are not bad. Now look at the definition here. Here's the definition of to discriminate. To make a distinction in favor of or against a person or thing on the basis of the group, right, class, or category to which the person or thing belongs. It means to show partiality. Another definition would be to note or to observe a difference, to distinguish accurately. Now, if you say, well, I'm not, I'm, I don't discriminate. You know, I don't discriminate. Well, I suspect that you do. As a matter of fact, probably you have a favorite, favorite pair of shoes that you wear. Maybe you have a favorite pair of pants or favorite shirt you wear. And when you do, when you say that's my favorite, you're discriminating. You're doing the very, the very definition is to, to make a distinction in favor of or against a person or a thing. So you discriminate. You discriminate. You probably discriminate against uh, restaurants. You know? You say, well, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, order pizza tonight. Well, where do, you go, where do you get your pizza? You know, you go down there to Little Sneezers and, 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 and get pizza? No, I don't like Little Sneezers. You know, I, I'd rather have uh, Papa John's. Or someone says, well, no, I don't like Papa John's. I like Pizza Hut. Now, if you choose one of those places over the other, you discriminated. You say, I prefer, I choose this one over the others. Now, if you choose Pizza Hut, you better watch it. Papa John's might come sue you. You're discriminating. No, no one would think that. No one thinks that. Why? Because you are choosing based upon your taste or your preferences, you just, you just prefer those things. So it's really not wrong to discriminate across the board. So don't say, well, you're, you're, you're wrong to discriminate. No, because everybody discriminates. I bet you even discriminate against people. Yeah, you discriminate against people. You know why? Because there's probably some people you don't like to be around. There's probably some people that you know that if you're around, they're probably going to influence you in ways you don't want to go. I was talking to a fellow just the other day. And he said, I don't really have any friends anymore. He said, because all my friends, the guys I used to hang out with, he said, they all drink. 
And he said, I don't want to drink. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I haven't had a drink in X amount of years. And he said, I, I don't want to drink anymore. He said, I don't want to go over there. I can't go watch a ball game. Can't go watch a uh, uh, NASCAR game. Why? Because there's a, a race. He said, because there's, there's going to be drinking over there. Well, is he discriminating? Yes. Is it wrong? No. That's not wrong discrimination. That's good discrimination. And so what I'm trying to show you, friends, is we need to realize that when someone throws out that, the D word, you know, well, you're discriminating. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you're a bigot. It may mean that you are just discriminating accurately. Look at this. To distinguish accurately, to make a note or observe a difference, to make a point that something is better or something is worse, to show partiality in a good way. And so it's not wrong to discriminate. Let me show you something. The Bible talks about discrimination. It talks about discrimination in a good and a bad sense. First of all, notice this. Let's notice how the word is used. The, the, word, the Bible uses the word discern a lot, and it doesn't really use the word discriminate, but the definition of some of these words means to discriminate. For example, uh, here's, here's the, the definition of a word discern. It's defined in the New Testament. And it means to separate thoroughly, that is to withdraw from or to oppose. So, see, you're, you're choosing a side. You're saying, no, this is bad, this is good. You're, you're withdrawing from, from individuals. You're withdrawing from something that you don't want to be a part of. That's discriminating against it. That's discriminating against it. And it says, to figuratively, it means to discriminate by implication, to decide or hesitate. So if you, if you, you know, if you are, 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 are trying to say, well, you know, do I need to go this place or go this way? You're, you're discriminating. You know, do I need to go this direction, down this street, or do I need to go down this street? You're discriminating. And so it's not necessarily bad to discriminate. And the Bible uses these words and actually shows that we are supposed to discern or to discriminate. For example, in Matthew 16, verse 3, Matthew 16, verses 2 and 3, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and he says he's chiding them, he's rebuking them. He says... He says, you can look at the sky. He says, in the morning, you look at the sky, and you say, in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. And he says, oh, ye hypocrites, for you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the, face, the signs of the times. So you can look at the weather, and I think we all we, uh, uh, can, can do that. You look out and say, well, it's like going to rain today. You know? So what do you do? Well, you discern, and you discriminate. You say, you say, well, this is not a good day to mow the yard. Why? It's going to rain. It's not a good day. Are you discriminating against the day? Well, yeah, I am. I'm saying it's not a good day. It's not a good day to do certain things. So I'm choosing to do something another day. I'm choosing another day to do it. I'm putting something off. So you discern. You can discern the weather. See, so when you hear Matt in here doing the weather, you say, well, man, here he's discriminating. Well, in a way, maybe he is. If he says it's going to be a good day to go hiking, he's discriminating. Is, is it bad? No. It's not bad. It's just showing that I'm making a difference. I'm making a point. So the Bible talks about discerning and it talks about discrimination. And it talks about it in bad ways and good ways. We have to know the difference. For example, look at this. In Acts 11 and verse 2, Acts chapter 11 and verse 2, Peter was come to Jerusalem. They were of the circumcision contended with him. Now here's that same word. There's that same word that means to contend or to discriminate. Now where had Peter been? In Acts chapter 11, Peter has come back to Jerusalem. He has been to Cornelius' house in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, look at this. Look where Peter's been. Acts chapter 10, he's been to Cornelius' house, a Gentile. And if you'll recall, this is what he says. This is what he said to Cornelius when he got to Cornelius' house. Look at this. Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10 and verse 28. He said, to Cornelius, he said, he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Now, wasn't that the definition that we just gave of discrimination? To separate from? To oppose or to, to withdraw from? That's exactly what they did. The Jews discriminated against the Gentiles and said, We're not going to company with them. We're not going to be part with them. Now that's discrimination. It's not right. That's not right. 
And he goes on to say, but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. But when he gets back to Jerusalem, he's still he's with some Jews. He comes to some Jews, and they tell him, well, you shouldn't have gone to, to that Gentile's house. You shouldn't have gone to that Gentile's. You shouldn't have been up there. But he, So, so what did they do? They, they contended with him. They opposed him. They're actually discriminating against him now. You shouldn't have been over there with those Gentiles. Now, friends, that's the, kind of, that's the kind of discrimination that we typically find today and usually what people are talking about when they say you're discriminating. You're choosing to, be, uh, to not be with someone, not some group of people, or some, you know, because of their race or ethnic background or maybe their social uh, economic status or whatever. You, you're discriminating against them. Well, that's not necessarily good. You know, that's not good. Peter says, look. But here I am, I'm over with the Gentiles. God has showed me that that's okay, that I, I can be with them. And so the Jews were, were, were showing that they were discriminating against the Gentiles. Here's another example in Acts 15, verse 9. Acts 15, verse 9, now here we have the Jerusalem council. Uh, Acts 15, and verse 9 uh, this is where they're, they're coming up to Jerusalem. We'll back up and get a little context here. Acts 15, and we'll look at verse 1. Uh, certain of the men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. And therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And so they come up, and notice, this is where Peter stands up, verse 7, and says, uh, Men and brethren, you know how a good while ago that God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Right? And then he says in verse 8, he says, And God hath, uh, and God which knoweth his heart, knoweth the heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Now watch us. And put and here's that word, and put no difference, put no difference between us and them. God did not make any discrimination between Jews and Gentiles because he purified both Jew and Gentile by faith in the gospel. That is, he's going to save Jew and Gentile the same way. So when you, take about, when you talk about the gospel, you're carrying the gospel unto all the world, you're not to discriminate. You're <clears throat> supposed to preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15 to 16. Preach to the whole world, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. <clears throat> and so Peter is, is showing them that, well, we have, we have discriminated against the Gentiles in the past, but we shouldn't do that anymore. We're not supposed to be discriminating. All right? So there's discrimination in the bad term. But it's showing that God does not discriminate between Jew and Gentile. Now, what does that do today? Well, let's think about that. We have people today say, well, I think that all the whites ought to live together and all the blacks ought to live together. You know what? They're discriminating. They're doing things contrary to what the Bible says. When the nation of Islam says they want to separate and they think that all black people ought to have their own country over here, that's not God's plan. And when the KKK and other Christian, uh, Christian identity, other white supremacy groups, when they say, well, all the white people need to be over here and separate from the black people. You know what that is? That's discriminating. It's not right. That's not, that's not the right kind of discrimination. But friends, here is the, the, the kind of discrimination that we can have. See, we need to realize that just because the Bible is giving us two examples here of bad discrimination does not mean that all discrimination is bad. We're supposed to discern or to discriminate correctly. Jesus said in John 7 and verse 24, John 7, verse 24, notice, he says, but judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. That is, you are to discern righteously. You are to make some righteous judgments and righteous decisions. So what we're talking about then is we're talking about making distinctions that are based upon righteousness. I want you to notice now, uh, from the Bible, notice how the Bible uses the term uh, discriminate in a good manner. 
All right? In Acts, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 5. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 5. Paul is talking to the Corinthians who were so at odds with their brethren, they were going to take them to court. They were going to take them before the, the courts of the laws of the land. And look what he said. He says, you should, you should be to the point, I'm going to get a little context here, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And he says, uh, dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? In other words, why would you go, why would you go before some individuals who are not Christians, non-Christians, when you could take your matter before your brethren? He says, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? All right? So you need to realize that you are actually holding yourself up to a higher standard, yet you want to go down and you want to be judged by the laws of the land rather than ha having these matters settled amongst yourself. All right? Now, uh, let's look at Just come on down here to verse 5. Here's what he says here. He says, I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. You mean to, you mean to tell me there's someone who can't discriminate between right and wrong? Who cannot determine what is good and what is bad concerning these personal matters between you two? You know what, brethren? In the Lord's church... We work out our problems amongst ourselves. We take individuals. We don't bias them. But if I have a problem with Mark, if I have tried to work it out with him and we haven't settled it, you know what we do? We take some brethren. We get some brethren. We say, come sit down and let's, and let's work out this problem. And those brethren, we don't tell them what the story beforehand. We set them down and we work out the problem. I say, Mark, here's my problem that I have with you. And he said, well, James, here's my problem that I have with you. And you know what? Those brethren are wise enough to determine, you know what, James, you're wrong. Or Mark, you're wrong. Or maybe both of you are wrong. But the problem is, but the problem is, you see, we have to have someone that can be the judge. And so they discriminate. They judge between us. That's discriminating. That's choosing what's right and what's wrong. So there is a there is a just, there is a just way to discriminate, or there is a right kind of discrimination to discern between who's right, who's wrong, what's good and what's bad. Now look again, here's another way this word is used. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29. Now Paul is talking about different uh, people that have different uh, spiritual gifts and how they're being used. Look at this, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 14. We'll start in verse uh, uh, 26. He said, how is it then, brethren, when you come together? Every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done to edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. Now watch this. Here's where we're getting down to the, to the judging part. He said, if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. But let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. Now, what are they judging? What are they determining? What are they discerning? Well, I submit to you, they'll discern whether it is indeed of God or not. Now, how are they going to do that? Well, let's come down to verse 37. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37. Paul says, uh, if there any uh, man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. And so, in this particular instance, 1 Corinthians 14, Paul's saying it ought to be the case that there's someone can make a decision, a judgment about the things that are being said. You know what? We, we challenge you to do that very same thing today. We never ask you to take our word for what, what the Bible is saying. We want you to open up your book, open up the Bible, and you examine it for yourself. Now, that's how you determine. That's how you judge. That's how you discriminate. Is James telling me the truth or is James not telling me the truth? 
That's how you determine I'm discriminating against James. Is James, is James uh, 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 doing, telling something that's right or is he telling something that's wrong? And so we discriminate against what people are saying. Now, is it wrong to discriminate in that fashion? No. It's not wrong to discriminate against that in that fashion because the Bible clearly says to judge, to make those discernments, to discriminate. And so, friends, if I find something that's contrary to the Scripture, you better believe I'm going to show partiality and oppose it. I'm going to be partial to the truth. I'm going to be partial to what I know is the Word of God. I'm not going to discriminate against the truth. And so when someone says, well, and, and this is what Charles said, Charles said, well, don't you think you're discriminating against people if you won't perform marriages for, or say that, that uh, two women or two men can't be married? No, I'm not discriminating. I'm not discriminating, not badly, not in a negative way. Now, I was told, well, you know, you're going against the trend. You know what, friends? In the Lord's church, we go against the trend all the time. Because we're not in the business to go with the trend. We're in the business to preach the word. Look what Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, in verse 1, he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. That is, you preach the word when it's the in trend and when it's the out trend. When it's in style and when it's out of style. Friends, I'm not, I'm not concerned about what the whole majority of the United States is doing or what the whole world is doing. I'm concerned about what is right and what is wrong, and I'm going to discriminate against the things that are wrong. Now, does that make me a bigot? No. Now, you, you can say I'm a bigot, but I'm not. I'm going to discriminate based upon what the Bible says. Now, I guess you call me a Bible bigot then because I'm going to be partial to what the Bible says. And I'm going to discriminate against those things that God opposes. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to discriminate against it. Now, when we're talking about this homosexual marriage ban and, 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 these, and the, the courts overturning it and uh, uh, opposing it, friends, you know what? Uh, the courts can... Can, uh, they can make rulings and they can hand down judgments and decisions and say this is right or wrong, unconstitutional, un non-constitutional, whatever. That's not going to change the truth. That's not going to change my judgment on the matter. That's not going to change God's judgment on the matter. And if they choose to be against God, then I'm going to discriminate against them. If they, if they say, well, I'm going to oppose what, what God's teaching on the matter is, now I'm going to oppose them. I'm going to discriminate against them. You better believe it. Now, when we talk about, when we talk about homosexual marriage, this is what I often hear. Well, what about the separation of church and state? Friends, you know what I find very interesting about that statement? Is we're talking about, we're talking about an issue, the issue of marriage. Now, now I know somebody's going to call and say, James, you the church is not the building. Well, I know that. I'm using this as an illustration. It stands for, it's going to represent religion or church in this matter. Just like the Supreme Court building is going to represent the Supreme Court. All right? I know the Supreme Court is actually made up of people. I know that's not the Supreme Court. That's just the building. So let's not get off on the, on, on the, on, on the, the mundane. All right? Let's look at this. The separation of church and state. Now, we're talking about marriage here. Now, friends, if I said, if we played a little word association, and I said to you, now you tell me which side of the line do these things go on, church or state? God. Oh, that's over here in the church. That's right. Um, Jesus. Oh, that's over here at the church side. That's right. Um... Baptism. No, that's over here on that's the religious side. That's right. That's right. Marriage. Where does it go? On the state side or the church side? We're talking about separation of church and state here. Friends, marriage 
clearly belongs in the realm of religion or on the church side, all right? So when I hear people say, well, you know, we need to have to separate the church and state, you know what they mean? They mean they don't want the church to get involved in the court's rulings on marriage. But think about that. Marriage started on this side. Marriage started with God. It started way back in the beginning in Genesis chapter 2 when God made Adam and Eve. He made them male and female. He created them husband and wife. There's marriage right there. It clearly belongs on this side. So why in the world do we, do we expect that the state then gets to dictate what the definition of marriage is? Do, do you not find that interesting, the ironic or crazy that people say we want to redefine marriage, a word that clearly belongs in, on the church side of the line, but we want the state to redefine it. Well, if you want to separate the church and state, then the state shouldn't have anything to say or do about the definition of marriage. You ought to go to where it belongs, where, where it originated, right here in the Bible. You see, the reason why people want the state or the government to get involved is because they want to redefine the things that are over here. And so they're willing to step across the line when it comes to redefining biblical things, godly things. They want to step across the line when it comes to redefining moral things. But the minute you oppose it, oh, we're going to jump back over here. You need to stay on your side of the line. You know, it reminds me really of like, you know, like, like the kids fighting in the back seat, you know, stay on your side of the line. And one of the kids pokes the other one, you know. And then when the other one pokes back, oh, you, he crossed the line. It's really childish if you really get right down to it. These people are not happy with what God has to say, so they want someone to come in and redefine what God said. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. People don't rewrite the Bible and uh, redefine biblical terms because they can't understand the Bible. They do it because they can understand it. And that's what you have here. So if you really want to separate the church and state, then why don't you stay on your side of the, of the line, stay on the state side? Why get over here and start messing in the, in the, uh, uh, the clearly biblical, godly, uh, divine side of, of marriage? Why don't you stay on that side of the line? See? When, but when, uh, so, so here's the question. Why do you ask the state to dictate to the church? Oh, I think it separates the church and state. But I'm going to get the state to dictate to the church what the church can do. Friends, that doesn't make any sense. All right? Does mine? Yes, not. All right. See? Why is it then if you want to separate the church and state, why do you start using terms or why do you start messing with terms that are clearly that clearly belong to the church, to the church side of the line? You know, here's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of, here, I've got a picture of this guy, he's, he's playing football. You can go ahead and put the phone lines up, Matt, if you want to. Here's a guy, he's got, he's got his football. He, this is a football. And this guy over here, he's got a baseball bat on his shoulder. He says, I want you to call it a baseball. I want you to redefine the terms that clearly belong to your game. I want you to redefine the term. I want you to call that a baseball. And the guy said, well, no, this, this is football. This is football. It clearly, it clearly is a football. You, you, you can't call it a baseball. I want you to call it a baseball. No, no, you can't call it a baseball. It's a football. So what does the baseball player do? The baseball player goes and gets the umpire that belongs in his game and dictates to the guy playing football, you are going to call that a baseball. This umpire doesn't have any authority to change the, the rules or the words or the lingo or anything about football. He is in a different game. And you know what? The government, the government is not in the Bible business. So why do you go get the government to try to dictate 
what God has already said. Unless, unless you don't want to play fair. Unless you just don't like the rules. Unless you don't like the fact that these folks over here on the church side, these folks over here with the Bible, are going to tell you, you can't redefine what God has already defined. Now, am I discriminating? Am I discriminating? Yeah, I'm discriminating. Yeah, I'm discriminating. Friends, two women and two men who have a piece of paper from the state, from the government that says they're married, will never be married. They'll never be married. Because by definition, they cannot be married. <clears throat> Mark can tell me all he wants to. James, I want to be a zebra. You know what? You, you can't. There's no way you can be a zebra. I want to be a zebra. You never will. It is not possible. And it's not possible for two women or two men to be married and call it a marriage. See that? It's just not possible. Now, am I discriminating against them? Yep. Sure I am. Is it, is it unrighteous discrimination? No. It's not. You know why it's not unrighteous discrimination? I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to take this phone call and then we'll, and I'll tell you why. You ought to work from the Lord. Hey, James. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? All right. Uh, James, if, I, if, I, if you hired me to work for you and told me a specific way to do something, and then I went and did it exa exactly against what you said, when you get upset at me? Yeah, very likely. Well, I, that's the way I think God is getting with these preachers that are so-called preachers that are saying that, this is this, and this is this. And I think it's upset. I mean, it makes God, I believe, a little bit on the angry side. Would you agree with that? I, I, I don't think it's a little bit. I think a lot. Yeah. All right. That, that, that was my point, sir. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks for your call. Yeah. Now, now here, here's why it's not discriminating, friends. For me to say, I will not perform a marriage between two women or two men. Now, someone, I, now I know, I know how the homosexual crowd works. Somebody's probably going to show up and say, "Hey, will you perform this wedding?" And I'm going to say, "No." But you know what? It's not discriminating. You know why? Because the same reason why I won't perform a, a wedding, same reason why I won't perform a same-sex marriage between two men or two women is the same reason why I won't marry, perform a marriage between some men and some women. See? He's not discriminating. Look at this. In Matthew 19, Matthew 19 and verse 3, they came to Jesus and they said, the Pharisees came to him uh, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Now there's, there is the foundation of marriage right there. God made them male and female. And said, For this cause shall a man leave his, mother, his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Where, wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let a man put asunder. So there's the definition of marriage, one man and one woman. Now, but watch this. In verse 9, Jesus gives an exception. He says, I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. If you put away your wife and marry another, you commit adultery. All right? Whosoever put away his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoso marries her which is put away doth commit adultery. Why? Because God joined them together. 
And God only gave one exception for severing the tie between a man and woman, and that was fornication. And so if a man comes to me and says, well, you know, I put away my wife. She burned the biscuits, and uh, we just couldn't get along. You know, she wouldn't wash clothes, and she got mad at me because I wouldn't pick up my clothes, and I wouldn't mow the yard, whatever. And so we just, you know, we got, we got married, and, you know, and two weeks later we got divorced, whatever. And uh, you know what? You're still married. And you, you, bring me, you bring another woman and say, now I want you to perform a wedding, a marriage between me and this other woman. Nope. I ain't going to do it. And I won't do it for the same reason why I won't perform a marriage between two women and two men. Because you can't marry her and she can't marry her and he can't marry him. All the same reason. See, he's not discriminating. I'm giving you the same reason. I won't perform a marriage between two men or two women for the same reason I won't perform a marriage between some couples of a man and a woman. If God does not say you can be married, if God will not put you together, then who am I to come along and say, oh, I'll give you a piece of paper and say you're married? I could give you a piece of paper and say you, uh, you know, uh, what, you're Queen Elizabeth and Prince whatever his name is. That, that don't make it so. See, friends, we're talking about discriminating based upon the Bible. If the Bible calls it righteous, then I'm going to call it righteous. I'm going to be discriminating. I'm going to discriminate. I'm going to show partiality toward it. If the Bible is for it, then I'm going to be partial toward it. If the Bible's against it, I'm going to discriminate against it. It's just that simple. So no, no, it's not. It's not uh, uh, showing partiality. Look at this in Mark chapter six. Mark chapter six, in verse sixteen. I'm sorry, seventeen. I'm sorry. Mark six, in verse seventeen. This is what John the Baptizer said to Herod, Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold on John, upon John, and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. He married his brother's wife? What? He married his brother's wife. Well, were the, they must have been married then. They went down here... They was over here in the state of Virginia, you know, now that the same-sex ban is open, they just, you know, went and got their papers. Well, look what John says in verse 18. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have, for he to have his brother's wife. It's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. But John, the Supreme Court ruled and said, I can have my brother's wife. God didn't say it. And God made the rules on marriage. But John, but John, we overturned the ban. Our state overturned the ban on marrying your brother's wife. It's not lawful. I don't care how many constitutional amendments there are. Which, by the way, just let me say this too. Just because a state passes a law that says marriage is defined as one man and one woman, that's not what makes it right. What makes it right is what God says. You want to work from the Lord? Yes. Have y'all found out who who's the person is that's marrying these gay people? No, I haven't. I haven't heard you talking about the 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 preacher that was supposed to perform the the wedding for the two lesbians. No, I, I haven't heard. Well, I haven't no, heard. it doesn't have it doesn't have to be a preacher. Uh, anyone can go and take the class and get a marriage a, a license to marry people. Well, but you're, you're right. I mean, they can and they can say it. That's right. But the bottom line is, they still won't be married in God's eyes. So I, you know, yeah, I know just a, that. That's just a, I would, an act of futility. I would just like. I would just like to know who the person is that's 
going to marry these people. But would it surprise you if you found out who it was? Do you, well, think, do you think you'd be surprised if it was some one of these preachers around here? I would be surprised if it's a preacher, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be it surprised. Mm -mm. They, no, they, what these guys do don't surprise me at all. Listen, if they won't tell you the truth on what God says about how to save your soul, it's really not going to surprise me if they'll, if they'll compromise the truth and, and marry two homosexuals. It's not no surprise to me at all. So, but we'll, we'll keep our eye out. I mean, it, it's going to be public record. I mean, his or her name, whoever's going to be, is going to be on the so-called marriage certificate. So, it'll be a matter of public record. So, anyway. Yes, thanks. So, all right. Thanks for your all call. Right. Thanks for your call. So, so friends, is it discriminating? No, it's, it's not discriminating. Not negatively. John the baptizer told Herod, you cannot marry her, it's not lawful. And that's the same statement that I would make to two men or two women who said, would you perform a marriage? No, it's not lawful. Well, we'll sue you. Whatever. Whatever. Which just goes to show where their agenda really lies. That brings me to the next point. What about, what about this? What about, Tolerance. Well, you're just intolerant, James. You're just intolerant. You know what, friends? Let's look at the definition of, of, of intolerant. Intolerant means not tolerating or respecting beliefs, opinion, usage, manners, etc., different from one's own, as in political or religious matters. Bigoted. It means unable, unwilling to tolerate or endure. All right? Now, does that make me intolerant if I say I won't perform a, a wedding? You got a word from the Lord? I'd like to talk to, to uh, James, please. This is he. You're on the air. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to tell you that you're doing an awfully good, good job explaining this. And my dad, he was a gospel preacher for more than 40 years, and he, just like you, he would not marry a couple that had been married and divorced before, because he said, you know, they can tell you anything. And for him not knowing, he would just never do it. And it never did cause any problems. Yeah. But I was just going to tell you, you're doing an awfully good job. Well, thank you. Thank you. Where, where are you calling from? Arkansas. Arkansas. All right. Yeah. I'm just watching you on the, the Internet. All right. Well, I thank you. I, wa I watch all of you. I watch Johnny and all of you. Every, every time I can get you on here. Well, t tell me your first name. Susan. Susan, okay. Well, thanks for watching, huh? Susan. You bet. Thank right. you very Thank much. Bye-bye. All right. Good to know people out there watching. Now, now does that make me intolerant? Listen. Res uh, toler not tolerant or respecting beliefs, opinions. You, you know what? You, you, can, you can say. You can have the opinion that two people can get married. You can have the opinion they can live together. I'm just going to tell you it's wrong. Now, Am I going to, am I going to hold a gun to your head and say no, no? I'm going to try to convince you and change your heart. So that's the power of the gospel. I'm going to convince you that it's not the, it's not the best way. It's not a healthy lifestyle. I'm going to convince you that it's not, be, it's not the best for the kids. But no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat you and pro prohibit you from doing it. So am I intolerant? No. But now listen, but those individuals who want to call two women and two men marrying and call it marriage, now are they intolerant? You know, this is, this is where we are here. Who, who is really the intolerant one? Remember the, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Christian, the so-called Christian couple who had a bakery and uh, they, they, they made wedding cakes. And these two women walked in and wanted, to, wanted them to make them a wedding cake for their homosexual wedding. And they said, no, that goes against our religious beliefs. And so they sued them. Oh, yeah, sued them. $150,000 in damages, closed their shop down, harassed all their vendors in order to cut off their supply line, all because they said it goes against our religious convictions. 
Now, who's really intolerant there? Who's really, the, who's really tolerating the, the other point of view? Who is really bigoted there? Who's really the bigoted one there? What about this? Colorado Baker. A Colorado Baker was ordered by the court. Notice, where's the separation of church and state? He was ordered by the court to make cakes for a gay wedding. He didn't want to do it. No, you're going to do it. Now, who is really, who's really the bigoted one there? You on the word of the Lord? You on the air? Okay. Now, who's really the bigger one there? See that? What about the separation of church and state here? I, I don't want to do that. Oh, we're going to get to courts. We're going to make you do it. Friends, is that, really, is that really the tolerant way to do? I mean, do you mean to tell me that there's only two, there's only two people that can bake wedding cakes and you choose that you're going to do that? You're going to work with the Lord? Yes, sir. I just want to uh, thank you for uh, standing out against these gay marriages, and uh, I'm totally against it. It says in the Holy Bible that that's not right. Uh, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, and I thank you a whole lot, sir, for speaking out against it. It's about time that somebody does it. All right, where are you calling from? Uh, Ridgeway, Virginia, Ridgeway. right here on the Eden Ridgeway line. All right, all right. Well, I appreciate you calling. Thanks for watching. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. All right, now, now who's really tolerant there? Now, let me just say this. Now, I, I was I didn't get to watch all the buzz of the night, but there was a lot of people calling in, like these people that have called in, that are opposed to this. Now who is really not keep in mind tolerance here, who is really respecting the opinions, respecting the beliefs or the opinions or the manner manners of someone who differs from their own? Who, who who's really doing that? Who's really the intolerant ones here? Look at this. I want you to look at this map. This is a, a map, and I think it'll change here. These are the years in which states have legislated in some degree, some way, shape, or form constitutional amendments that ban same-sex union, same-sex marriages. They've either changed, they've made it a part of their constitution that says it's to be defined as one man or one woman Something to that effect. Different, different degrees, whatever. But they all have these in place. There's like 30 of them right here. In every case, in every case, in each state, it was passed by a overwhelmingly majority of the people. As a matter of fact, if you, if you took all these states together, 67% of all the people who voted in these uh, elections said they did not want homosexual marriages. They wanted to, they wanted to put a ban on it. Yet courts have come and overturned how many? Fifteen of them? Ten, fifteen of them already? And now that the Supreme Court says we're not going to weigh in on it, then the rest of them are probably going to start to fall. But remember, the majority of the people in those states have said we don't want it. But remember what intolerance is. Intolerance is I don't care what you believe. So when the majority of people in America have said we don't want homosexual marriages, the courts come along because, remember, we can't separate church and state when it's, when it's in the uh, homosexual favor. They come along and say, no, we're going to dictate that this is what you do. What, who's really being the intolerant one here? You want to work from the Lord? Yeah, James, this is Dale uh, from Brown Summit. Yeah. I think you're doing a good job. <laughs> but I like how this question went. Uh, when did the uh, people with homosexuals get the name changed to gay? I'm saying something years old. I don't know. It, uh, it's, that's kind of a political like thing. Yeah. And then I was in the Navy and they called them faggots and now they gay. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's. I, I just say let's say homosexuals. I mean that's that's what the Bible would say, or that's the that would be a clear definition of here. So the Bible doesn't actually use the word homosexual; it says infeminate and abusers of themselves and mankind. I know but, the devil, but yeah. I was just wondering why they got their name gay. Well, I think you know people try to people try to change 
names, what, what, what things are called, in order to make the sin more appealing. You know, it's not adultery anymore. It's just we're having an affair. You know, okay. it's, it's not homosexual. It's, it's an alternative lifestyle. And so it. it's... All right, thank you. All right, thanks for, your, thanks for your call. Anything to make it more appealing. So, friends, who's really being intolerant here? When the people say, we don't want it, but yet we're going to go to the courts and force you to take it. But, friends, you know what the problem we're having here? The majority of people are opposed to this, but you know why we're really having this problem? It's because while they may go and vote against homosexual marriages at the ballot box, the problem is they won't stand and oppose it at other times. They really don't really care what God says about other things. And that's what opens the door to say, you know what, we're going to let ungodly lifestyles come on in. We don't, we don't have the conviction to stand up and oppose these things until it just gets to the very brink and we go fed up with it. We'll go and vote against it. But friends, by then it's too late. By then it's too late. All right. You're on the word of the Lord. You've got 30 seconds. This is Susan again, and I'm in Arkansas. Uh -huh. I see that you've got your map up here, and I stood at the uh, voting place from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., with a petition against this, and we voted it down like three different times, but the uh, the courts overruled that, and we never even voted on it. But they've passed it here in Arkansas now. Yeah, yeah. So you're it, you're exactly right. Yeah, it's, it's, it really doesn't matter what you vote because the courts are going to say this is this is what it's going to do anyway. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. You're exactly right. That's what I was going to tell you. Thank you for right. your. Thank call. you very much. Bye bye. And so, friends, the bottom line is. You're going to have to stand up and, and fight for what God says regardless of what the courts say. And if you don't have the conviction to do that now, well, it's going to be too late in the end. All right, friends, we're out of time. We're out of time, and the phone just keep a ringing, but we're out of time. Thanks for watching. If we're going to be assistant to you, please give me a call. Till next time, remember to ask what does the Bible say, and you always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. So I think you, actually, you may have been in Rockingham County uh, when this happened, but you made the run over to JDK Automotive on Highway Street, and this is what you found. That's right, Mark. Uh, this is a pretty large automotive, uh, looks like a repair facility, and there was a volunteer fire department from all over Rockingham County who assisted in mutual aid at this location. You know, you had... Uh, not only you had Madison Mayadan there, 